been racist all your life and didn't know why you was looking at skin color and all of that and God delivered you to make you see that we all are the same. Cultural differences don't make us humanly different or biologically different. Amen. Cultural differences and that's nothing to argue over. Okay, none of us change the way we were born. None of us can change who we were born to. So I just spent the week just praising God and thanking God for choosing us, choosing this church, choosing this platform, choosing EX Ministries. And amen. Choose it. I mean, folk going to say what they're going to say, but they're going to say that if you don't do anything. So you might as well do what the Lord asks you to do. Amen. How many of y'all are here because you heard an EX Ministries message? See, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. And that's what the devil's mad at. We didn't put up billboards. We didn't pass out cards, pamphlets, leaflets, brochures. You know the brochures. We didn't pass out brochures. We weren't trafficking to get folks in here. A message got you in here. A message. The word of God. And so thank God, you know, and I always make the music second and the word of God first, but the music goes with the word too because we owe God praise. We owe God praise. This week, some of y'all are horse right now because the Texas Rangers. I know I was out there screaming. The Texas Rangers won a World Series and we go give all of that energy and yelling and screaming to some brothers that's making money and they won't give us any. <laughs> Amen. We got a building next door that could use an MLB check. I'm about to call some of the ones I know. Brother, where you going to church? <laughs> yeah, but so we don't, you know, we don't, um, we, you know, we scream and yell and get into all of these games and different things. And then when it comes to God, we up here singing, forget about yourself, concentrate on him and worship him. And I mean, some folks was looking at their phones. Now I can see everything where my seat is. I can see looking at your phones, looking around, just, you know, just unengaged. I, I just, so I wanted to just do some music this morning or whatever. And then I said, well, let me make this little slide with this scripture on it. And of course that turned into about six slides. So that's, but I would rather have you informed so we'll know what we're doing and why we're doing versus us just, amen, acting like everybody understand what's going on. So we're gonna talk about this real briefly. And then we're going to bring the praise team up and we're going to sing some songs unto the Lord and then we're going to go home. Amen. Amen. But I was just led of the Lord to this because this was just, I believe it's very important for us to understand these things. When God uses us in the capacity that he's using us. And I know, you know, back in the disciples days, they were used but they weren't used really in the time they were living. It used, it, most of it happened after they died and had passed on or were martyred. But we're actually seeing fruit. We can look around and touch the fruit of the message that is going forth through EX Ministries. We, we, we can see the fruit. And after it's been so many years, some of y'all have been here 16, 15 years, 14 years, whatever. Now you got teenagers some of y'all were married in here. All of that is God's fruit. That's God's fruit of a message. And you have to look at it in terms of, man, I need to pass this on to someone else or someone else needs to hear this so that they can come out of whatever mentality they have and accept the truth for their family. And they can have fruit in their family. And then you have to be thankful and grateful for it. Amen? You know, I'm a nice guy. Am I a nice guy, Jay? Thank you. Somebody called me nice. Am I nice, Jeff? Yes, sir. This week? I am. I'm really a nice guy. A lot of stuff that I could get up and say and do, I don't do for the sake of people's feelings or whatever. 
But you know, the Lord has really been dealing with me this week about, man, you just put your foot down when it comes to what is right. right. Amen. And you know, I ain't one of the older pastors that just grab the mic and interrupt stuff and y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> I grew up with that. But no, I don't want y'all all in here shaking and schizophrenic and all of that. But... <laughs> But when it comes to praising God, I wanted to stop PJ a minute ago and get that microphone and just tell, what is wrong with some of y'all? And don't come say, well, I don't really come for the music. I come for the word. Uh Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Don't use God for just his word. You owe him more than that. You owe him. If you have the activity of your limbs, you owe him limb activity. If you have vocal cords, you owe him a voice. If you have hands to clap, you owe him a praise. We owe him. Don't get caught up in a personality and come in here to hear me speak. Oh, pastor ain't going to speak today, so I'm going to miss. What about what you're supposed to be doing? What about your responsibility? Has he been good to you? Has he been good? Amen. So, all right. Let's, let's, now, that should have happened while we was doing it. That's all right. We're going to sing some more. You get a makeup. We're going to get a makeup run of it. Amen. And this is important. Listen, God is worthy of our praise without doing anything else for us. Without doing anything else for us, he is worthy of of our praise when we are gathered in his presence we must give him praise glory and honor must give him praise glory and honor we should bless his name by declaring his greatness openly among all that see us somebody else needs to see you declaring who God is Well, I praise him in my heart. I'm not emotional like that. You're a lie. You going to get that Christmas bonus on your check? And you might have a praise bank, a praise break at the bank. You and you by the ATM. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, y'all get happy. Amen. He proposed to you. You was on the discount shelf. And he proposed and gave you a. You got her phone number. Amen. Your anniversaries, everything. You, you, you get excited. So don't say this is my style when I'm in church. I, I have us. Everyone has a style. No, you couldn't have lived in the Old Testament. You'd have got killed. They'd have took you out and stoned you. Because when the praise went forth, everyone had to participate. And if they didn't participate, God would show up and go to killing folks. How dare you? With all that is within us really means that we have no reservations or conservation. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. What does that mean? All that is within you. That means that it's not in you no more. You're letting it out. We should give God all that we have. Psalms 103 says it like this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I love this passage because he put the benefits second. He's going to bless the Lord with all that is within him first. And then, don't forget his benefits. He forgives all thine iniquities and heals all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thou from destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Has he not been merciful? 
has he not exercised loving kindness? Man, if we got what we deserved, we wouldn't be here. He satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is what? Renewed like the eagles. You know, I posted the, what's the message I did? The devil proofing too. I posted a clip of it this morning online and people began to inbox me like, where were you when I was a teen? Man, all the mistakes I've made, I've just messed. Man, where was this message when I was a teen? Like, why, you know, Nobody told me this. I wish I had known and all that, but just go to Psalms 103 and 5. God says he can satisfy your mouth now with good things, and then your youth can be renewed. All you got to do is do what's right now. And you can praise God because he can renew your youth. Amen. You don't need Botox and all these augmentations you can fix the outside up all you want everybody gonna see you the same now they gonna snicker but let God renew the inside change your heart amen God has chosen us to be his light in dark places oh this is such a blessing to me God has chosen us ABC, EX Ministries, to be his light in dark places. Amen. A whole generation of young people, even here, even in this room, Jay, you'll never know the number of young people you shine light into their dark places. Yeah. Evelyn and Amy and just Elder, when you speak here... People don't realize you are chosen to be his light. That makes us the light of the world. He has given us a unique call to bring answers to the searching hearts and victory to those that are victims of generational devils. We must give the Lord praise and honor for choosing us to carry the gospel in this hour against all the carnality, deception, and hardened hearts, he has given us what? Favor. He's given us favor. Psalms 91 says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name. O thou most high, this is my favorite part. When my enemies are turned back, when they come back after me, they shall fall and perish. How? Yeah, you can't handle your enemies. Look at somebody say, you can't handle your enemies. If we could handle our enemies, we wouldn't have any. What you going to do with human emotion and mad people? Angry folks, crazy folks. Folks with demons and devils using them. No matter how much good you do, they'll find something wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, he now he this, but oh. Yeah. A devil in them. They ain't going to ever see it your way. That's a losing battle. But the Bible says when my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence so it has to be God that deals with your enemies you can deal with your enemies by praising God and making them follow you into his presence uh oh that just preached right there now that, that got me excited yeah you can make your enemies follow you if they follow you see they follow you to see what you're doing so that they can mess with you that's what they're doing. They always follow you. But if you're in the presence of God, guess where they're going to follow you to? The presence of God. When we praise God, he's drawn to us and inclines his ear to us. Those that pursue us are led into his presence and dealt with accordingly. 
<laughs> so it's best to praise God and glorify him when we are under duress or attack. Yeah, that's not the time to get down and depressed. That's not the time to bite your lip and sulk in the corner. That's the time to give him praise and glorify him. Because if you bring his presence, your enemies will have to deal with God. Here's the best example, Acts 16 and 23. Paul and Silas, the Bible says that they were beat with many stripes and thrown in the jail. And the Bible said they were placed in the inner jail. Yes, sir. Like the deep jail. We would call that the hole. Put them in the hole and then they put a guard next to the door and told him, told the jailer, keep them safely. It says, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them in the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them in the what? Inner prison. I'm going to put them in here to make sure they don't get out. Now, when I'm reading this, Paul and Silas don't have no weapons. And Paul was a little bitty dude. So I'm trying to figure out, they must have been afraid of something. They must have heard about God. No, I'm serious. This is not, they weren't fighting. Paul and Silas weren't fighting them. So when you got to go through all this trouble and charge a jailer to keep them and then put them in the inner prison and then put their feet in stocks. If they're in prison, why are they in chains? Somebody was like, you know, I kind of heard a little something about the God of all gods. and He kind of does things. Hey, Amen. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and did what? Saying praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone. Prisoners that what was guilty. <laughs> When the power of God sets free, it's free indeed. Everybody free. <laughs> and the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. Boy, he was mighty confident that what he had done was going to keep him because he went to sleep. He woke up seeing the prison doors open. He took out his sword and said, that's it for me. He was going to kill himself because he just knew they all had ran out. And Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. <laughs> These dudes, man. Oh, my goodness. We're all here. Then he called for a light and sprang up and came what? Trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Praising God led to this. The power of God came and followed them and their very enemies had to deal with God. And they said, believe on Jesus, on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy what? House. Praise did this. So quit running, quit trying to address folks that's against you. Go ahead and praise God. Praise God. Quit fighting with people that are against you. Folk think I'm stuck up and snooty because I'm not talking to the enemy. Why would I address the devil? I already know how he feels. And so if the devil is in anybody, I ain't answering his questions. And you have to be the same way. But this, if you don't have a life of praise, then you're going to always try to get deal with stuff on your own. And you don't realize one of the benefits. That's why he said, bless the Lord on my soul for getting out his benefits. You can praise God and God can rule on your behalf. They didn't break out and leave because God didn't tell them to. God wanted them to stay there because there was a jailer that needed the gospel. 
Most sacrifices in the old covenant were given to God because of the sins of the people, right? Jesus paid the penalty for all sins with his death. But we should still give a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord for redeeming us from sin. Amen. Well, I don't feel like it. That's a sacrifice. Well, I'm a little tired this morning. Sacrifice. The only sacrifice he requires is that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's what he expects. And with that comes praise unto him. No matter what we have done or how far we have strayed from him, we can repent and use praise as a sacrifice to show God our hearts. God, God don't want to just hear you say you sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Do you mean that? But if you attach praise to it, if you attach praise to it, it becomes real in your heart. And that's what God is looking at. Your heart. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 15. And you know, I'm, I'm just looking for the day that when this music starts and these singers come, everyone is engaged. It should be louder out here than it is up there. That's what I'm looking for because God deserves that. Amen. And you're not cool. Don't be cool or to try to find a cool way to worship. That's what uh, David's wife, uh, Saul's uh, daughter, didn't like him for. What was her name? Michelle, Michael, Michael. Michael. Her name was Michael. Her name was Michael, and she was looking and saw him dancing, and he's just going forth, and he's a king wearing a linen ephod, and she just like, oh, he's embarrassing all of us because he is just going in. And David was like, hey, let me go in because God is worthy of it. I wouldn't be king if he hadn't anointed me. And that's how it needs to be in here. You worried about folks looking at you? The Bible said, I, oh, she, she died for that. Yeah. I know you thought David danced naked. Do I preach that sermon again? He did not dance naked. So put your clothes on. Hey. <laughs> you have to say that now because somebody started a vicious rumor years ago that David danced naked before the Lord and that's not biblical no he was just dressed like a common person but he was a king and that's what she was upset about you just showing yourself as common and she wanted the pomp from her father Saul and so that's, some of y'all have that spirit in here. We're just, mm-hmm. Yeah, like you in a pageant. Praise God, yes. And you don't do that. You be in here watching the football game. We almost have to shackle you. Going crazy in the hall. Man, what's up? And come in here. That's right. Boy, when you was in the club, you snaked all the way down. And you, got, you got all the way down. <laughs> got down to the ground and did slither. <laughs> I did all the insects, the worm and the mantis. You did all the insects. <laughs> you did all the bugs all of the, the whole animal kingdom you was in there just I me and come in church and won't give God praise 10 people got shot in the club that night you made it out. You should, you should give God the glory. You left your wig in there. You was running so fast. <laughs> Didn't go back for the hair. They didn't keep that. I'm going home. Mama told me not to come. 
that ain't no way to have fun. <laughs> they don't know that song. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the what? Sacrifice of praise to God. How? Continually. That is the fruit. In, see, don't, don't be trying to make it inside of you. He's telling you that's the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. He explains what is the sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips. Things we are saying and declaring, giving thanks to his name. I'm almost done. Man, I wasn't supposed to preach today. God inhabits our lives God inhabits or lives, excuse me. God inhabits or lives in our praises. So when there are false gods, idols, evil or sinful things and people surrounding us, we can praise God and change the very atmosphere around us. The Bible said they put the Ark of the Covenant in a room with the statue of Dagon. Did nobody have to say nothing. They went in there and Dagon was laying on the ground with his hands cut off. Amen. And that's a statue. So just imagine what praising God can do when you're in the midst of all this false gods and stuff. And evil and sinful things and people surrounding us. We can praise God and change the very atmosphere. And we can break curses destroy high places, pull down strongholds and cast down imaginations that are against God by calling on his name in praise. Some of y'all, your deliverance has been waiting for you to praise God. And I'm not talking about the reserved and the conserved praise. I mean, giving God what he desires. All that is within you. All that is within you. In his presence, there is liberty and victory. Psalms 22 says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were what? Sometimes you got to cry unto the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to cry unto the Lord for that deliverance. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. Let us put on our praise garments and give God what he deserves. What does he deserve? All of the praise now I'm going to do something real quick because this is real heavy stuff gets on you some things get on your life to bring a spirit of pride over you where you don't feel comfortable praising God in front of folks sometimes you're just heavy because you've been through so much and it's hard to lift your hands when you're already heavy and some of your hearts, it's just hard. It's just a hard time, a rough time. You've been, unfortunately, watching the news too much. You know, because outside of ABC, it looks like the world's about to end. <laughs> but whatever it is, God can give you a garment of praise. Meaning a disposition of praise that you can have. So when you're in his presence, you can just go forth and not worry about anyone else. This passage is very important to that. Isaiah 61 and 3, it says, to appoint them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of what? Amen. Heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Everyone stand to your feet. He wants to give you today 
the garment of praise so that he can be glorified. If you need prayer for that, for that heaviness, that spirit of heaviness, just come on up and we're going to just believe God that you are freed from it. Sometimes things just take a turn in your life and the devil will try to keep you there. But we're going to believe that God is going to free us from all, any kind of bondage, any kind of heaviness, any kind of feeling that would interfere with the worship. With your praise, with your confession. Sometimes it's a rededication that's needed. Where you rededicate your life to the Lord and make that decision that this is the God I serve. This is the God I serve. Father, I know I strayed. I know I went away. I strayed away. But I serve you. That confession needs to be made, needs to be spoken. We're going to believe that all heaviness be removed so we can be free to praise the true and the living God. The true and the living God. Hallelujah. 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 Everyone that came, just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you, Father God, for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Father, for in this time, you called us for this moment as a church body to lift you up in dark places to speak life where there is death and to be examples of freedom and victory in your name. We thank you, Father God, for that purpose. We thank you for plugging us in to a ministry such as this. We thank you, Father God, for the last hour anointing that is upon ABC and EX Ministries. We thank you, God. Thank you for just loving us so much that you would give us truth continuously. And Father, we want to be thankful to you. We want to be able to thank you and praise you. We want to be free to lift you up, God. Father God, to declare to the world that you are great and mighty. To declare to our friends that you are the God we serve to declare to our family that we love the God of all gods to speak against idols and speak against false gods and stand against other gods we want the courage strength to do it so father remove all heaviness right now in the name of Jesus all heaviness that the cares of this life may have brought. All heaviness that financial problems may have brought. All heaviness, Father God, that emotional issues may have brought. All heaviness, Father God, that people bickering, talking, saying things, word curses, everything, anything. Father God, remove that right now in the name of Jesus so we can be free to lift our hands. So we can be free to declare your name. So we can be free to praise you. So we won't be bogged down with the issues of others, the emotions of others, or our own emotions. But Father, free us from the heaviness right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So that we can praise you freely and openly in the house of the Lord and in our own homes. Wrap the garment of praise around us, God, so that we can praise you in spite of what is going on. So we can praise you in spite of what others are doing. 
so we can praise you in spite of what the world is doing. So we can praise you in spite of what others are saying. So we can praise you in spite of what our circumstances are. So we can praise you no matter how things look. We can give you praise, glory, and honor because you deserve it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give us the garment of praise and we will praise you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. For you deserve the glory. You Come on and sing that. And the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. Come on, sing it again. You deserve the glory for you alone are God and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy One more time, your holy name you deserve. Deserve the glory, you alone, Jesus, and the honor. So, God, unashamed, we lift up, lift up holy hands and worship as we, as we bless. For you are great, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one. Praise is reserved for you. There, there is, is no one else. For you are great. Hallelujah. You do miracles so great. There is no one like there you. There is no one else like you. Nobody else like you, Lord. There is no one. For you. Come on, PJ, say this. No one can save. Come on. Say no one can save like you. No one can save like you. Come on, we know because we called on his name. No one can save Hallelujah. like you. No one can save like you, no one Jesus. Can save like no you. one can save you like you. No one can save like Come on. Like no you. one can save like you. No one can save I was a wretch and done. No one can save no one can like you, Jesus, like you. no one can save like you. No one can save like you. No one can save like you. No like Nobody you. loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Come on, has anybody experienced the love of God Nobody in this place? Loves Give God some praise in this place. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Nobody saves. Nobody saves. Yes, it is. Nobody loves like Come on and 
Everybody sing it to him. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Come on now, everyone, just close your eyes. I want we want to sing that to him. Focus on him. All that he's done. All that he's been. He's always been there. He loves you. Hallelujah. He loved you when no one else did. He loved you when there was nowhere else to go. Hallelujah. Come on and sing that no one can love. Come on, say it right here. Sing nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. I remember when I felt no love. Nobody loves like you. And I called on the name of Jesus. Nobody loves like you. His love rescued me yesterday. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. It's a love that doesn't run out on you. Nobody loves like 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 you. Grateful for the love of God. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Like Nobody loves like you. It's a love you. that wasn't just words, but just Nobody words. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like she you. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Love that never felt. Nobody loves like you. She said it's love that never felt. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves like you. Nobody loves. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Thank you for the love, Lord. Thank you for the love, Lord. Thank you for the love, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, you can hug somebody and tell them, I love you and the Lord loves you. On your way back to your seats. Come on, let's sing it a little more. Nobody can say, no one can say. Nobody says like you. Nobody says. Nobody says like you. Nobody says like you. Nobody says like you. Nobody says. Nobody says like you. No one can love. Nobody. 